Gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to Adult Education Ingredient. My name is Rosalia Wong. Guess what I'm going to bring you today? Today the topic is called How, Ge uh, how Differences Aspiration and Connection as in Gender. <laughs> So for awesome suggestions and advices, put me through the link below as I will bring you awesome insights into what you need to know for your profession and your organization. Okay, let's get back to the topic now. I read this article with reasonable interest that how Taylor in 1999 could convey her interest in men and women development are different regarding separation and connection. Taylor stated the striking of a uh, balance between the um, twin needs of separation and connection is an ongoing challenge for the developing adults as well as for the theories in that developmental process. Taylor's end of studying gender in separation and connection is to explore how we as adults could, for example, engage with the world of ideas and learn from experiences and also how to examine and challenge assumptions and also how to arrive at a commitment through self-reflection and also how can we um, relate to others through mutual from a place of mutual enhancement and um, rather than needs uh, from others subscribe to my channel by hitting the button uh, so you will not miss anything because I bring you new topics, new insights and interesting uh, ideas into what you need for yourself, for your profession and your organization. Okay, let's get back to the topic now. So how does it work? As an adult educator, Taylor stated that uh, divided into three, uh, this topic into three sections. So the first section is development as separation versus connection. The second one is development as development as separation and connection. I seem to have a problem with the word development. Okay, the third one is separation and connection in an educational context. I will go into detail in each one of them. So first one, development as in uh, separation versus connection. So men and women, boys and girls are going through different development stages and different life experiences. For example, family, ethnic group and uh, social cultural etc. So furthermore, um, these elements also include trust, mistrust or inferior or superior etc. So it is up to the individual to ready or not ready to deal with the challenge. For gender and uh, connection and separation to, um, to work, these elements uh, also actually was include uh, religion, uh, political occupation and gender and this they need to develop fully and as a bridge each identity only the men and women can fully accomplish the acts of separation and connection in another word all these elements such as the um, like you know the gender uh, elements the elements which include the politics religion and also occupation and gender, they need to develop fully and establish each own identity and only that men and women can fully accomplish the acts of separation and connection. A bit complicated, isn't it? So separation precedes connection and a separate identity is essential for a healthy connection to be achieved. This is a very, very um, useful quote by uh, Erickson in 1959, cited by Taylor. So separation precedes connection and a separate identity is essential for a healthy connection to be achieved. Remember that? So if you enjoy the contents, um, remember to put a thumbs up and share it with your friend. Okay? Thank you. Now 
Now, next one I'm going to go to is development as a separation and connection. Here, Taylor involved in a few theories that who use the principles working toward men, women, separation and connection. The first series is back in 1986. His principle is to study women and realize that the work relationship, family and social cultural identifications contribute to women's sense of self. The second one is a group uh, called Stone Corner. Stone Corner is a matter of um, educators, uh, theorists and therapists um, who work together to uh, use their principles to work towards men, women, separation and connection. But they focus uh, especially on the element of empathy. So that they suggest that in order for empathy to work, it need to be ego flexibility and ego um, strength to work together. So what do you mean by ego flexibility? Ego flexibility is to connect with others. So ego strength is to return to oneself. So um, if either of the ego, um, the relaxation or the restructuring of the this ego boundaries is repaired, the element of um, empathy will be suffered and therefore it will affect men, women, separation and connections issues. Okay. The next series is Kagan in 1994. His principle is to incorporate and conceptualize the developmental uh, interplay of the two fundamental human drives, which is the separation and connection. So, as we know that all these theories, they work hard to, towards men and women uh, separation and connection, and they work hard to use their principles as how men and women separation and connection can work. Final one, we finally we come to the final one is separation and connection in an educational context. So in order for men and uh, women in the uh, separation connection in educational uh, educational context to work, Taylor suggests that we have to realize that there are four orders. First order, responsible for others problem, which is unconscious empathy that neglects um, their own study or own education. The second one is a well-developed sense of empathy in the way that the self realized that, uh, realized that he or she is not there to responsible for everyone's problem and it is just a feeling. Feeling can be eliminated and um, you know it's just a, whether you can eliminate the feeling or you know how to recognize this is only your own feeling and you can eliminate the feeling. The third one is a recognizes that the burden of others uh, making self uh, feeling for responsible for the problem is the selfishness of the other human being. That is, we have a choice to say yes responsible or not responsible for others problem. And the final one is uh, see that is to see oneself as outside of others problem but responsible for the behavior of feeling for others problem. That is recognizes that Others are responsible for their own problem. That is very complicated, isn't it? But I suggest you to go over the video and listen to it all over or over again. I'm sure that you can understand. I'm sure that you can make meaning out of the whole topic. If not, you can always recommend, um, comment down below and ask me questions. You are most welcome. So for awesome suggestions and advices, put me through the link below as I will bring you awesome insights into what you need for your profession and your organization. And also subscribe to my channel by hitting the button, button so you will not miss anything as I will bring you awesome topics and insight and interesting ingredients every Monday. And if you think the content is interesting, uh, remember to put a thumbs up and share it with a friend. That's all for my topic today and thank you for tuning in uh, until next week. Thank you and goodbye.